there was the cable car. A picturesque, sentimental survivor of an age when commuting distances were so short that getting there and back quickly was no problem. An age, too, when there always seemed to be room for one more. Today, of course, it sometimes seems there couldn't be room for one more. And getting there and back quickly just isn't done. In San Francisco, for instance, it's 43 minutes during rush hours to or from Oakland. Any way a driver times it, with luck. Could scenes like this ever be only a sentimental memory? Certainly. Because traffic jams are the result of too many vehicles trying to move in one place at one time. While the transportation problem is basically that of moving people rather than what they're riding in. Take the time now required for automobiles to cross over San Francisco Bay. It will be cut to 11 and a half minutes from Oakland when the San Francisco Bay Area's rapid transit system becomes a reality. Like most of the nation's metropolitan areas, the transportation problem here is immediate and overwhelming. With a population now of three and a half million, growing each year by 150,000 more, any attempt to serve the Bay Area's transportation needs by freeways alone would cost five times as much as the proposed rapid transit system, with even more billions demanded for resulting parking facilities. Yet those billions would be squandered on a solution that would be no solution at all, an impossible nightmare of over 40 freeway lanes emptying a creeping glacier of vehicles into a city. of parking space. Cities are for people, not for automobile storage. So here was a reality which had to be faced. Even with staggered work hours, traffic loads still hit their peak over a rigidly defined 20 hours each week. To work at all, a system capable of safely and efficiently transporting the maximum number of passengers within those predictable rush hours must be devised. Vital as new freeways are, it takes 20 auto lanes to handle as many people as just one lane of rapid transit. Because the most one lane of freeway can take in an hour is about 2,000 people in autos or 3,000 people economically in buses. While rapid transit can economically move any number from 3,000 to 40,000 comfortably seated riders over the same lane. The answer for the San Francisco Bay Area is the same unanimously specified by metropolitan planners for every major urban area in America, a combination of automotive freeway and an efficient metropolitan rapid transit system, each used to its best advantage, each complementing the other. With this combination, the Bay Area can look forward to a high-speed transportation system, starting with a 123-mile network along the west and east sides of the Bay, plus a San Francisco-Oakland underwater tube crossing. It will feature electric trains traveling at 70 miles an hour, modern, attractive, comfortable, boasting a seat for every passenger, arriving and departing every 90 seconds during rush hours at conveniently located stations. Suburban stations for commuters will be surrounded by ample parking lots. And local suburban feeder buses 
will carry passengers to and from nearby residential areas. Improved circulation of people, which is what rapid transit means to any urban center and its surrounding suburbs, will increase business in all centers. The main reason suburbs exist where they do, after all, is easy access to all business areas. And that access is measured in time, not distance. Without congestion and delays, suburbs are desirable. And as access becomes easier, communities prosper. Real estate values do increase when you have good transportation. In Toronto, for example, within three years, the increase in realty values exceeded the fixed charges of the system by more than one third. Toronto's rapid transit system now being extended is only one example of the sound results that come with sound planning. For there, as in mushrooming urban areas everywhere, planning for economic growth, for intelligent allotment of land, and above all for people, is essential for the healthy expansion of cities and their surrounding areas into ideal, functional, enjoyable places to live and work. Remember that a freeway system alone without even considering the cost of providing parking facilities, would cost many times as much as the rapid transit systems, which will free the freeways to do the essential job they were planned to do. It is this interrelated, complementary, total transportation concept of streets, freeways, and transit lines, which will most effectively serve us all. So who benefits? Who gains from the dynamic concept of tomorrow's ideal living and working in areas planned for people? Everyone benefits. Everyone benefits from safe, efficient, coordinated metropolitan transportation. 